Let me show you how to paint dark wavy hair in your acrylic portrait. I'm working on this 24 by 30 acrylic portrait of 30 people and making some progress on it. We're using the acrylic glazing technique, um, building up many translucent layers, mixing um, clear matte medium with our paint and it develops a lot of luminosity and depth and smooth blending. So it's definitely something you can try, but I wanna show you how um, I go about painting dark wavy hair in my painting. And uh, I'm gonna kind of focus on this gentleman right here. Here he is in the reference photo, and we need to add some darker values to his hair and just kind of block in uh, some more accurate form. And we're gonna basically just take some <clears throat> raw umber dark and ultramarine blue and mix that. And that'll be the foundation of what we do. But uh, before I even get into that, I'd like to give you a free gift. Um, I have a PDF downloadable guide called Fix Muddy Skin Tones in Your Acrylic Portrait because that's one of the things artists struggle with the most. And I'm going to show you using the glazing technique and even some opaque methods how you can mix skin tones more confidently, more intuitively, uh, give you some tips and techniques, um, things to avoid, things to do when you're mixing skin tones, uh, kind of a step-by-step -step process in a way of how to do it. And uh, you can get that at realisticacrylic.com forward slash fix dash muddy dash skin tone. So go ahead, um, download that free guide, my gift to you just for checking out my channel here and um, watching my work. And uh, you'll find the link for that also in the top comments and in the description of the video. But uh, fix muddy skin tones to PDF guide, I'd like to give it to you for free. And uh, now, <laughs> with that, let's go ahead and dive into the actual tutorial. So I've got some, uh, like I say, raw umber dark, ultramarine blue, uh, a little bit of burnt sienna, titanium white. And so basically, I'm going to take that color and I'm going to paint on top of what I currently have. So in really developing realism in your portraits, it's vital that you know how to use layers, especially when you're doing, uh, when you're working with acrylic. Because with layers, you can um, add on top and, you know, build a foundation of a lighter uh, kind of glaze or layer. And then you can add little pockets, little shapes on top of that. And that really develops the realism. Getting realistic hair, it's not about having the right brush. I mean, of course, you got to use, you know, the right brush for the job. You need to use a small brush and you're working on a small area. But there's no brush really that's going to make your the hair look realistic. Um, it's really in how you use it. This is not a fancy brush. This is just a round brush out of a kit. You know, it's like a $15 brush kit with several brushes. So not an expensive brush at all. Um, but it's more of placing these values, these glazes and, you know, mixing kind of the right tone and just going a little darker each time. So you start off lighter each successive glaze or layer gets a little bit darker. And then you look for those little shapes. You see that triangular shape right there? So that shape, kind of rectangular, that shape. You know, all these different shapes, I'm observing them in the reference photo and simply kind of replicating what I see. And, you know, it can help even to get your reference photo closer to what you're working on. You know, so I just move this a little bit closer. And so, so now I don't have to remember as much. I can just look at this face, quick jog over here, back and forth, and that can help too. So there's really some techniques, you know, involved in getting realistic hair. Now, I'm gonna let that layer sit. I'm not gonna do this all in just one sitting because I've got a lot of people to paint. And I wanna kind of do a little bit on each one so that we don't have just one person painted all realistically and the rest of them are just white canvas or white hardboard in this case. So one of the things I like to do as well, when I have a color mixed on my palette, is I like to just kind of hop around and see where else I can employ it. Is there anywhere else in the reference photo that has a similar dark value? And I say, yeah, this guy right here, he's got that right there. Now, even though his hair is kind of a you know light brown, it looks dark where the light isn't hitting it. So we're gonna darken this area right here. And by getting this contrast, you know, a little bit in the front too, that's going to develop that sense of realism. 
that's how you do it is you get some areas darker than others and you put the dark areas in the appropriate spots that should be darker. And so we're going to go ahead and just check this young woman's hair and put a couple of dark spots here. So she again kind of has a you know, dark blonde or light brown hair. But again, even though that's her hair color, we can use these darker values where the light is not shining on it. And that does make a difference. All right, so a couple of dark spots and we want to kind of replicate these shapes that we're seeing in the reference photo. So let me just uh, show you again. I'm gonna fill my round brush here this is just an average size round brush, nothing fancy. Size one, I believe. But I'm gonna look for that specific shape there and try to replicate that shape. Kind of a long triangular curvilinear shape. So it flows down like this. And then there's another little piece that goes above it like that. All right, so that's the shape I'm trying to replicate. And if I do a good job with that, and then I add a few more layers, some mid-tones to tie in this shadow in with the areas that are lighter. It'll look realistic. I leave it lighter on the top, but eventually I'll add some more mid-tones. That'll be some lighter glazes up here. And then we darken it a little bit more on these areas where it can afford to be a little darker. Get a little glaze in there. And when you step back, it just, it just adds contrast. And as we add more and more of these layers, it'll just continue. It'll just continue to look more realistic. All right, so that's really the strategy behind this. Even this girl with blonde hair, this woman with blonde hair, this actual value is very much a dark brown. <clears throat> but you can tell her hair is blonde because you look at the highlights and the highlights are lightly colored. And that's how we know she is blonde hair. All right, so I just want to share a few of these uh, techniques with you. It's this uh, strategy, I guess you could say, for painting black wavy hair in your acrylic portrait, but it could work for straight hair too. And uh, this is where I'm currently at in the process. So again, get your uh, Fix Muddy Skin Tones in your acrylic portrait free PDF guide. Uh, and that is in the description of the video and in the top comment. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Give this video a like. Helps it to be seen by more people. Subscribe to this channel and get more tutorials like this where I'm just painting live. This is not, uh, this is real time. I'm not just annotating and, and dictating on top of a recording or a time lapse. This is just me showing you exactly how I do what I do as I paint commissioned portraits professionally. All right, so thank you so much for watching. God bless, and we'll talk to you soon.